The six and one rule. This is so important and it's a game changer and it could change your life. Six good days, eating healthy, one not bad meal. The six and one rule. It's very, very important to ensure that if you want to live a healthy life, that you live as healthy as you can most of the week. Now, I don't believe in transformation challenges. I don't think that they work long term. I think they're great for temporary weight loss, but I don't think they're designed to help you long term. It's a quick fix in my opinion. And some people might disagree with me, but this is my opinion. And in 30 years, I've been involved in this industry and helping thousands and thousands of people achieve their better than ever goal and get them to the best shape of their life. I know what works and I definitely know what doesn't. And what I'm about is lifestyle change. I'm not about changing you temporarily or a quick fix. If you're into a quick fix, then go somewhere else. If you want permanent lifestyle sustainable change and you want to make that change permanent for the rest of your life, not just for the short-term goal of a wedding or an event or whatever it may be, then you're in the right place. This six in one rule will change your life because it's something that is sustainable and easy to follow because it's something that you can do on a daily basis. What do we mean by the six in one rule? First of all, we need you to make sure that you plan. Like we talked about last week, planning your day. If you're planning your day, you're planning to succeed. As the saying goes, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And this ties very closely in with the six and one rule. So six days of the week, we want you to eat as healthy as possible. And most of you know exactly what that means. You know that you're going to eliminate certain foods and alcohol and, and, you know, stimulants and, and things out of your life. And there's times when you need to be able to stick to something to give yourself a little bit of reassurance. But then that one day or that one meal a week can be where you let your hair down. It can be where you say to yourself, you know what? This is my reward. And when you've got something to look forward to, you're not constantly searching for something because you know there's a reward at the end of it. So I find this is very sustainable and I find this is very easy to follow. And my wife and I, Lucy, we've been following this plan and rule for many, many, many years. And we've instilled these philosophies and this rule with all of our better than ever family members. The six and one rule. What does it mean? How do we do it? Real simple. Six days of the week, you need to plan the healthy foods that you're going to eat. So just recapping, you need to organize your day with the not negotiables. You need to make sure that what you do as far as exercise is at a time that you know you're going to stick to it. And then you're planning when you're going to eat. And this is where the six and one rule comes into play. Six days of the week, you need to eat between four to five meals a day. I'm a big fan of eating small, frequent meals to sustain your energy levels. I'm not a fan of in- intermittent fasting. And again, there's going to be people that disagree with me. This is my opinion, and I stand true to it because I know that it's worked over the last 30 years that I've been doing this. And I'm about lifestyle change and changing you permanently. I'm not about helping you for a short period of time and then you're putting all the weight back on or losing your fitness and falling off the wagon. Sure, there's people that will fall off the wagon and they fail, but we pick you back up and get back on track again. But a quick fix is not going to do that for you. Instilling the right habits is what does it. And the six in one rule allows you to do that and allows you to have a social life 
as well as live your life. And that's more important. So how do we start our day? Once we know when we're going to eat, here's a typical day that I work with. For example, let me tell you what I do in my day. I'm up at 3 a.m. The first thing I do when I get up in the morning is I have a tall glass of warm water with apple cider vinegar, a teaspoon or a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, and a squeeze of lemon. So half a lemon squeezed the juice into that tall glass of water. It helps alkalize my body. And I drink this first thing on an empty stomach. The next thing I do is I meditate for about 20 to 30 minutes. Meditation is detoxing my mind and clearing my mind. And it helps me refocus and helps me work what I need to do for the day. It centers me, it grounds me, it helps me stay calm. It's so important. I believe meditation is exercise for the mind. Just like exercise, physical exercise is good for the body, you need to do exercise for the mind and I believe meditation is that. So we detox the body by alkalizing it, by having apple cider vinegar and lemon. I then meditate and then generally I then have breakfast straight after because I start work at 5 a.m. So I've got a two-hour window. Now, sure, most people say to me, why don't you just get up at 4.30 and go to work? Because I need that routine in the morning. So I need to get up early enough. And a lot of people say to me, how do you have so much energy throughout the day? Because I work right through to 9 p.m. at night and my day is full the whole day. We'll see anywhere between... 30, 40, sometimes 50 clients in a day. And that's on the hour, every hour. So I need to make sure that I maintain my energy levels. And the way I do that is by eating consistently and constantly fueling the fire. I talk about fueling the fire or stoking the fire, like increasing your metabolism. And that's like, imagine having a fireplace and putting wood on the fire. If I had said to you, just put one log on the fire and then walk away. When you come back, a week later, the fire's gone. But if you actually put constant twigs and small branches and things on the fire and constantly feed that fire, the, the fire keeps burning. And that's what we're talking about here with your metabolism and your energy levels. We don't want your blood sugar level to drop too low. We want to sustain your blood sugar level so you've got energy throughout the day. So you don't have that mid-morning slump. You don't have that mid-afternoon slump. You don't have that grogginess first thing in the morning when you wake up. When I wake up in the morning, I'm bouncing out of bed. It's full steam ahead. Let's go. Let's get on with it. Time to conquer the world. That's how I feel first thing in the morning. And if you ask any of our better than ever family members, I have the same level of energy first thing in the morning at 5 a.m. when I see my first client, right through to when we see our last client at 8, 8.30 at night. By the time we finish 9.30, sometimes 10 o'clock at night. I only need five hours sleep. Now that's me. I'm not saying this is going to work for you. I'm not saying this is going to work for everyone. But I notice that as I meditate, as I plan my day, as I stick to my six and one rule and I feed the fire and feed my metabolism and constantly giving myself energy, I notice I've got more energy. I notice I'm more productive throughout the day. I notice I'm getting a lot more done. So you think about it. Where most people might need to sleep eight or nine hours a day, I'm already three to four hours ahead per day. So I'm ahead in the week probably three or four days because I'm getting more done, because I'm getting more energy, because I'm planning my day and I'm living the six and one rule. It's a lifestyle. It's not a quick fix and it's easy to implement. So once you do your apple cider vinegar, well, again, this is what I do, and then I meditate, and then I go to work. Three hours later, I eat. So if I have my breakfast at 4 a.m., 4 a.m., generally my breakfast is three egg whites, maybe one yolk, and I have a couple of slices of rye toast because I need the extra energy there. So I have that, and I have all my vitamins and another, another tall glass of water. So I'm having two tall glasses of water in the morning. Then three hours later at 7 a.m., I'll have a protein shake and maybe a shot of coffee and then again, 600 mils of water. So it fills me up again, lots of fluid. The brain needs fluid. The muscles need fluid. You need purified water. 
throughout the day. Then three hours later, again, 10 a.m., I might have a piece of fruit. And then 11 a.m., I do a workout. I'll do my workout for an hour. And then 12 p.m., I have lunch. That may consist of a salad with some tuna and a few mixed nuts and seeds, like pumpkin seeds and so on. From there, three hours later, I'll have another protein shake, maybe another shot of coffee with that. Three hours later will be about 5.30, 6 p.m. I'll have dinner, and that's always vegetables and always some form of protein, which may be fish generally. It might be some lean meat and, or it might be some chicken. What you eat is really up to you as long as it's healthy. After that, I don't eat again. I make sure that I eliminate any food and all I'm having is uh, liquid after that in the form of water. I don't believe in having coffees or teas or any of that later on at night because it's time to wind down. Then we journal, we unwind, go to bed. Sometimes I meditate again before I go to bed and then it's on with the rest of the day. Get a great night's sleep and start again. Now that's just a, a basic, simple, my own example of what I do every day and that's my six. I do that six days a week and I generally eat the same foods every day. So we meal prep on a Sunday, my wife and I, and we'll generally eat the same food Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, I'm at home with my wife, so generally we might have something different. And then Saturday night is our bad night. That's our one bad meal or cheat meal, if you will. Some people say, oh, I need to have a cheat meal. Well, that's our cheat meal. Generally, we go out with friends or family or we do things together. We might have a few drinks. We might eat whatever. We don't even worry about what we have. We're not, we don't care about the quantity or what we eat. We enjoy our lifestyle and we enjoy food. Food is there to be enjoyed, but you need to be in control of food. Food does not need to be in control of you. And this is the biggest mistake a lot of people make. People have certain addictions. They're addicted to sugar. They're addicted to salt. They've got cravings. I constantly get people saying to me, oh, but I get cravings because you're addicted. Food is in control of you. I do not have an addiction to food. I ensure that I'm in control of food. And when you eat a certain way and you live the six and one rule, you stay in control of food. You don't allow people or situations or emotions or anything to deter you from your plan. I could go into our fridge right now here at our Better Than Ever studio and I could show you exactly what I'm going to be eating for lunch, for dinner. You know, breakfast is the same thing, six days, seven days a week. Mid-morning, mid-afternoon is the same thing. Now, a lot of people say to me, but Tony, don't you get bored? What do you mean? Food is not there to entertain me. It doesn't have to sing and dance. All it needs to do is to provide me with fuel. I always say food is fuel. You don't go to the service station or the petrol station. When you put gas in your car, you don't choose which gas or which petrol you're going to put in the car. You put the fuel that that car requires. If it requires unleaded petrol, you put the fuel that it requires. You don't sit there thinking, hmm, what do I feel like putting in here today? You just put what's required. The car does not know any different. Well, the same with your body. There are processes in your body. Your body is like a machine. Once the food passes your taste buds, that's it. The process is the same. And it's very, very simple to overcome that I need it to taste nice and I need it to make me feel good when all you need is to think about food as fuel. Give your body the fuel that it needs. Give your body the right fuel, not the junk, not the alcohol, not the soft drinks, not the things that are going to cause you to feel depleted and low in energy and drained. Give yourself life foods, greens, vegetables, healthy things that are going to help you have more energy. If you give things, I always say, foods that grow out of the ground or grow on a tree is what you should be eating. Anything that is processed or anything that comes out of a paper bag or a can, eliminate it. 
eliminate it. Eat the right foods and most people know what they need to do. They just choose not to do it. It's a choice and the choice is yours. You choose whether you want to live the six and one rule. Now, I know there's going to be times where you're going to find that the circumstances don't suit for you to eat a six healthy meals per week or six healthy days per week. So there'll be times when there's main events like long weekends and Easter and Christmas and holidays and so on. Now, don't beat yourself up if you can't live the six and one rule. Do the best you can with the circumstances in front of you. But here's where you then move to what we call the compensation method. Now, the compensation method allows you to still be in control by predicting what you're going to do in the future. It, what I mean by that is this. If you know you've got an event in, uh, in four weeks or three weeks or two weeks, then leading up to that event, make sure that you have what we call a seven and O. Oh. So you don't have any bad meals. You don't have any bad food. You don't have anything that you shouldn't be having. And you try to live seven healthy days for the week. And you do that right up to that event or that holiday or whatever it is, then you allow yourself to have the two or three or four days to let your hand down. But you still have a choice. At that event, you can choose how much to eat. You can always control your portion sizes. There's a famous book by Morel Giuliani called French Women Don't Get Fat. And it's all about portion control. Now, the French... They eat whatever they want, but they have such small portions and they very rarely put on weight. Why is that? Because they can control their portion sizes. And this is the number one thing that you need to do when you're at an event or some function that you know is going to be your bad meal. So if you're finding that you're not getting the results that you want and you live in the six and one rule, maybe your bad meal or your bad day is too bad. Maybe you need to scale right back and control your portion sizes. And that's the other thing that needs to happen during the week. When we eat healthy, you still need to control your portion sizes. So the way I get clients to explain, uh, the way I get people to measure their portion sizes is just with the palms of their hand. So you should not have any more than the palms of your hand. So one side of your palm should be your protein serve uncooked, chicken, fish, or meat. The other side should be salad or vegetables. And that's it. That's your portions. You don't go back for seconds. You don't pull your plate up. Remember, I have another famous rule. Never get to a meal hungry and never leave a meal full. Now, if you follow these simple principles, I guarantee that you'll be able to get the results that you want to get and you'll be able to sustain those results long term and forever. It's really that simple, the six and one rule, but it goes hand in hand with the compensation method. So you need to compensate. Like we say, if you're going to pay, play, you've got to pay. If you're going to play, you have to pay. There's no two ways about it. You're going to have to compensate for anything bad. So you may have to do that extra workout to burn off those extra calories. You may have to do the 7 and 0 oh, where you don't have a bad meal up leading up to the event. Or when you get back from the event or the holiday, you have a string of good days. You might say to yourself, you know, a lot of people do dry July. We don't have any alcohol in July. Well, why don't you match that by eating healthy and having no bad meals or bad days throughout the July? That way you've got a whole month of health. You know, it's so important to be accountable and make sure you are responsible for what you need to do. And the easiest way to do that is to follow that six and one rule. The six and one rule in combination with the compensation method work a treat. Now, when you think 80% of what you look like is what you eat, it doesn't matter how much exercise you do. If you don't get this part right and you don't plan your day and you don't plan those meals 
and you don't live that six and one rule and you don't look at food as fuel and you always look at food as making you feel good and giving you something that you can get from other areas, you're going to struggle. But if you always follow this simple rule and you compensate when you know you've been bad and don't beat yourself up when you fall off the wagon, get straight back on and stay accountable, you'll get the results that you want to get. As we say, results start here. You know what you need to do. Everybody deserves to be better than ever.